I have never played this game before. I don't even think I've watched anything of it before because it never has really piqued my interest. So this will, um, this will be great. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Okay. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Is he though? And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, I want to move. he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. I want to listen to you. I hate Mondays. Oh, me and Stanley are the same. I can't click anything. Can I not jump? I got an achievement that says, no, we disabled it. You can't jump. That is so rude. <laughs> like, All wow, thanks. Ah. Gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I don't know where the meeting room is. For the love of- wait. For the- for the love of God, kill me. All I desire- what? Let them erase with ignorance of the world. Can love truly be anything but death? Hopefully I will find out soon. What the heck? Why- why does the printer want to die? Can I unplug you? Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. Nor did it advance the story in any way. But I want to help the printer! Stanley clicked on literally every single door in the office, because he doesn't pick up well on cues from his environment. Oh, fucking suck a duck narrator. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Ha! Joke's on you! I don't know left and right! Okay, this is left, right? This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. No, I didn't! Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire. That was the right door? Yes, it was left! No, no, you mean it was the right door, as in it was not the left one. No, wait, ha? Huh? Yeah, anyway. The lag. <sighs> Yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. What is Stanley this room? simply stood here, drinking it all in. Drinking? Can I have a drink? No? Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth. At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. Oh, leave me it's alone. It's possible that this is why everyone left. I hate you. Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue. But when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. Oh, fuck off. Okay. Fine, I'll but leave. at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. And I'm not going in that door. Nope. I'm gonna just go in here. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Oh, fuck you! Leave me alone. Do not lie if you're lying right now. Stop. I'm not lying. The narrator is. Do not jump from the cargo lift while it's in motion. It will cause death. 
Penalty for misuse of cargo lift. Penalty for jumping. Can I? Wait, can I jump off? <gasps> can I jump off? Can I jump off? Look, Stan. Look, Stan. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley <laughs> left from the platform and plunged to his death. Yay! Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. <laughs> Splat! <laughs> Look, Stanley, I think 30. perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. You are. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. Mm -hmm. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. I can do what I I'm want. I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. Who's her? This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. Who's her? She's been waiting. Who's her? D dude, you can't dangle a her in front of me and not tell me who she is. That's not how it works. You gotta actually show me. I really wanna know who her is. Why is it dark in here? That's her, Fuck. Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can Who's truly her? place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. I don't want to pick up the phone. I don't know who her is. You could be lying to me. You could be gaslighting me. As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed him. I'm not picking it up. Not just with radiance, but with hope. I'm hope not picking it up. Reunited one. Wait. Oh goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? Mm -hmm. No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I'm I scared. I believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't Maybe? have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. I want to observe shit. Choice. It's the best part of being no. a real person. <laughs> but if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, <laughs> you can't make in this me. scenario, a hypothetical real person named Rupert has a choice. He could invent a machine that eliminates food shortages across the world to make life better for all people. Or he could spend it? years how? of hard work forgetting how to read. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice Where? that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Ah! Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. You can't skip. Turn to a partner and practice saying, my goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. Ah. Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make well, a significant I know they're not. contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant, and the feeling should subside. 
At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision-making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Now oh, I can't you know your jump! Choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. I that did that story earlier, would though. No sense at all. But I did just that earlier, though. You need to get though. you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. Damn it! I wanted to die. Almost there. You'll take the door on the left. Back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> I don't when wanna. Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Do I actually have to? Oh, God damn it! Oh, it's ruined. You I can't believe after everything we talked about that you... My story, you've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? Mm -hmm. To know that my story is now incorrect? How mm -hmm. could I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. No! Don't! Come on! It's fine! No! That's a bit dramatic, ain't it? I'm still here, here in this pile of rubbish, with you, you, who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. No, it was the fine. only thing in the world that was mine, and you run it into the ground. No, what, fine. did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Yeah. Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? Maybe this he is how Stanley how to do what actually I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. Uh, that thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. No, I'm not! Oh, I'm a... My story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was I a whole left and right. underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried well, so hard to make... You should know... Just behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back. <laughs> behave exactly as Stanley would. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Two hours later. Mm. No! Fine, fine, fine. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Everyone is unique. You most of all. Well, I'm trying to be. Number of slides, charts, charts and slides, slides. Oh my gosh. 
Get Chris out of the broom closet. Why is Chris in the closet? Broom closet! Chris! Can I join you? Can I join you? I'm I'm also gay. Please. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. Can I jump out the he window? Drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. I'm sorry, is there a problem? Yes! You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. I this don't is a want crucial it. step. You I don't care. I don't want to. Okay, fine. You're not going to do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, I was you know. You could have gone to. through the door on the right. You could have I done whatever did. the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. I... Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. You. <laughs> you. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What? Stanley? Hello? Are you. Is everything okay? <laughs> Stanley, please. I. I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. The story it. needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Ah, oh, goddamn, we're back here again. Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming <gasps> to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I can go downstairs. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken Ow. that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. A little bit. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. What? Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? 
Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was, in fact, a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself, too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. This is a fucking so horror he game. His eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on I his can't back. See. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly no, the way no. it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. I'm not normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. I'm not okay. <laughs> Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. <laughs> this is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the I body. I can't move her. And then she turned and ran. Wait, okay. Okay, let's actually listen to him this time. Let's not get sidetracked. In a wave of disbelief, let's not get Stanley decided to go up to his... Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Where's Chris? Chris! 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 There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. It's my home now. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least, if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Fuck all! <laughs> you gonna say something more, are Mr. Ner- Yeah? Are you really still in the broom closet? Mm -hmm. Standing around doing nothing? Mm -hmm. Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. Because I can! You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? Yeah. If I'd said, Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least she would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. 
but... didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. But Chris is supposed to be in to here. Mention... There's no Chris in here though. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Mm -hmm. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend you're saying, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. Do you guys find it concerning? Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. Hey! He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Excuse me? Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got I wish. Explored it a bit and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Yeah, definitely. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Okay. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. They have fallen prey to any number of your countless <laughs> human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Nope. Oh, ah! uh, you too? Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? There's bunnies. Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. 20 minutes later. Fine, fine. Ah, mwah. Love you, broom closet. Okay, let's go. It looks different! Panda? I'm gonna go up. A few moments later. Yeah, how long is this elevator? What? What? Mm, why is it different? Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this? What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, a pin eight, number. four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Sarah, 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 Sarah. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. <gasps> Trying to input hey, anything what? on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. 69. 69. 2845. Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in, and the door just opened all by itself. And what? Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. Fuck you! Um, what the fuck is this? I 
I hate elevators. Did anyone know this? Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. So I can be bratty again? Feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him. This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Now I have two things telling me what to do. Well, now I'm going to... Ah! Oh, thank you. Whew. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Nope. Stanley thought better of it and realized he simply had too much to live for. No, I don't. <laughs> nope. Still on board with death? The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward mm -hmm. and willingly confront his death. Yep. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Uh -oh. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. Well, goodbye. I had fun. Oh. oh. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Get fucked, game! I'm still alive! <laughs> and yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Oh. Office layout. <gasps> Someone's playing solitaire! Can I join? Boss's office. Where's the green one? I got like a green office one. <gasps> <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time... <laughs> <laughs> Alright. This is the second time he's died. All his co-workers were... Wait, no. This isn't the right office, is it? Is this Stanley's office? Oh, Wait, he's questioning me? Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Try going back up the elevator? Too late. Next time. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. 
What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life. Their Holy fire! Each fired? bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Yeah, it's because of you, narrator. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even yeah. possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. What if I turn it on? Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. What if I turn and it as on? the cold reality of his past began to sink in, what if I turn Stanley it on? decided that this machinery would never again exert what if I turn its it on? terrible power over another human life. What if for I turn it on? Come on. Would dismantle let me, let me, the controls let me, let me. once and for all. I can turn it on. Can I not turn it on? That's so sad. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Ah, oh, fine, I'll listen. Am I dead? Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine, unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Brady! Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was perhaps the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Let me go. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the Pretty. new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Now let's go through that all again just to click on. <laughs> Complete the Stanley parable. Hey, I beat the game. Gaslit into Already being happy and all right. And Stanley decided that as soon as he found a new space he felt safe in, that he would never leave it again in his life. What? Of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his. Oh no! Oh no! 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 Not! I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Please take your time. I will. One eternity later. Okay. What was it?
The moment he entered his manager's office, Stanley froze in his tracks. Eight, not four, a living five. soul anywhere. Stanley was yeah. in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. <laughs> I that don't need kind of you. Anxiety isn't healthy. Hey, so sure. he relaxed for a few moments with some calming new age music. Okay. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Good for you, narrator. Good for you. And when at last he found the source of the room's power. Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? Maybe. After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Oh, Stanley. I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. Yeah. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere ah. moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are. Mm -hmm. A moment of solace before you're obliterated. All right, I'm in a good mood. You're going to die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, nope, swallowing work. everyone inside, or I let it burn mm. to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come Incorrect. up with on the next go around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional oh. seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have Probably. no idea where you're going or what you're supposed it looks to be like... doing right now? Or did you just yeah. assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? Maybe. I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, see. screen One. to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons. No, these colored ones. Or maybe this big red button. Or Three. this door. Everything. What's anything. the numbers on something the walls? Here will no idea, me. because I don't have a Why zero. Do that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One soul? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> Red button. Stanley, you're in for quite a disappointment. Red button. But here's a spoiler for you. I don't know. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only I don't still get playing this. instead of watching a cutscene because I want to I'm watch not smart you for enough every for this. that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's Five. fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Goodbye, employee. Thank Take you. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. Mm -hmm. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here. Just you being blown to I'm pieces. confused. Will you cling desperately to your frail life? Or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice. Make it count. Or don't. It's all the same to me. Mm. All a part of the joke. 
And believe me, I will be laughing at I'll accept the feed. I want to see this ending anyway. From the moment we fade in until the moment I say happily ever up. Are we getting to the beginning now? Nice. New content. Oh, new content? What does that mean, new content? New content? Hello, and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As Welcome. you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... or oh, oh, there we go. there it goes. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. Hmm. Hmm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if them... Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. Content! The jump circle. All right. All right, let's see. It's the jump circle. <laughs> I can jump now. Ah! Damn it! Is is that it? <laughs> Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Goodness, another elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. Ah, it's just you're there. elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? Mm -hmm. If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley okay. Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And oh, wait, there's more. Very good. Yes, I knew there had to be something else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. Thank you for enjoying the new content. That's it? What? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievement, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. Oh, it's my fault, Stanley. Oh. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend? Huh? Psst! Stanley! Come over here! In the vent! I want to show you something! Dress him, but also vent though. 
Okay, I'm gonna go in the vent. Yeah, I'm worried okay. too. You remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it got me okay. thinking about the past and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So okay. I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Take a look. What is this? Elden Ring! I call it the memory zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was solid with a cheap re-release? <laughs> Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. Cute. Smile because it happened. Go outside, don't play for five years. Unachievable, is it impossible to get this achievement? Why is it impossible to get that achievement? British Academy Awards. Now, when is Radon coming out to defeat me? And over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism, 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Mm. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim, it was Persona 3, it was all of them, and now it's nothing. It's no okay, games at all. How you doing, lovely? It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. I'm so confused and lost about what's actually going on. Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games, and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone to spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. I mean, it's kind of true for some games, isn't it? Oh, these were simpler times, Stanley. But I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? Hello, bro. How are oh, you? No. God, no. Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, the online video game distributor. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's been collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? Um... No. <laughs> not recommended. Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. Oh! Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley, I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. 
This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Oh dear, what an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure. Like I let no, these people down. No, you're not a Perhaps failure. The Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. No, you're not a failure. It's fine. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish Let's there was a Sarah. skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. Where? Oh, I want to, I want to click the skip button. And here it is. Go ahead. And... <laughs> oh, you're back. You see, you were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long rambling. Let me click it in. Full... <laughs> well, there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption... Okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45... Stanley! Stanley! Huh? St Stanley, please don't push the button again! It's been 12 hours! You've just been frozen there. I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're... Oh, Stanley, you're back. You're back. Oh my goodness. I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I I think it's been a week. Or two weeks. I've been sick. <laughs> oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. Thank you. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not moved for one? Narrator? I think he might have died. Oopsie. But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But Hi! where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, Entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs down. Are you done? The end is never 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 the end okay fuck off I think it's leaking a little bit just a little bit right here yeah, leaking. The end is never the end is never the end. Holy, yeah, we well, should have fixed that. That's not good. Ooh, sunlight. Vegetation. 
This is what happens when you put skip button in games. I wish most games had a skip button though. Ah, now it's ugly again. What the fuck? What the heck? doing now? Let's just continue to go this way. I'm just gonna hold a W and just hope for the best. Like, what else is there to do? Oh. All of his co-workers were... Wait, no. This isn't the right office, is it? Is this Stan his office? Back here. New, new content! Oh! Oh, good. You notice my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. Okay. Is there more jumping? That's a good question. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about mm -hmm. how roundly disappointing this ultra-deluxe version has turned out to be. Okay. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. Mm -hmm. So forget this ultra-deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Okay. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley Parable 2. Whoa! Holy well, shit! Yes, I you see, it was far superior to a measly re release with a few minor additions. Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully fledged sequel. An entirely new experience built from the ground up. Why there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. The color red! Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize Me. a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally Nostrils. spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Holy Game shit. development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. I get nostrils. Sequels are good. Portal 2, Half-Life 2, Batman Arkham Asylum 2, City, Divine Original Sin 2, Doom 2, Aladdin 2, Return of Jafar, Dark Souls 2. Okay, anyway. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. Have your name in the game. For the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and Big validated button. as people. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button, which speaks the name of the button. person playing the game. Isn't that wonderful? Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Here, let's have you role play as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. 
Hi, I'm Jim. I want you to imagine yourself living as Jim, sleeping and waking as Jim, falling in love and being heartbroken as Jim. I'm Jim. Seizing all of the world's possibilities as Jim, and as Jim, watching your dreams crumble into dust. Do you feel it deeply? Are you really, truly Jim right now? Probably not. If so, then please step forward and press the button. Jim. <laughs> yes, you see. What a thrill. What a rush. That was you. The button described you. Do it again. Do it again. Jim. Ooh, it hits even harder the second time. Is if this were again? the only new Is feature in the Stanley Parable 2, it would still be worth the money. Let's take a break from the gym button. I'm too emotionally drained from all of this personal validation. All right, thank you for the gifts up to Jim. That's amazing. Now we just need a gift up to Stanley. A narrator. Then we are golden. Then we have them all. I suppose I could allow only people named Jim to play the Stanley Parable too. That would actually save me the work of finishing this feature. Thank you for the gifts up to the narrator. Reassurance bucket. A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical. That it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair Where's the in bucket? those who played it. Well, I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. But where is it? It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley. Anytime you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and but there's no will bucket. fill your mind and your heart. It's true. Oh, there it is. As long as you hold on to the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley Gimme. Parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. Gimme. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive Gimme. dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest... It's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. Ah, uh, Dahlia, thank you for the gifts up to Stanley. Nice, now the whole gang is together. All right, let me get the bucket. <laughs> Can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. What? The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That, okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on Get Well Someday and Happy 12th Birthday. Which would you go with? Uh, Get Well Someday is kind of funnier. You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Happy 12th birthday, step niece, it is. Ah. Well, actually, maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision. We're moving on. Fuck you! False sense of choice. The jump circle! You know what? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's a... Oh, wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Mm hmm Hmm. Oh, well. I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece, then. <laughs> Rip. What's this? Ah, collectible. Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. Woo! Collect them all. 
God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. I actually have to find six of them? Now, here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever, and when you pull it, the achievement will be given to you. It's as simple as that. Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the achievement is still fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen. This is such a scam. An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it will go at the end of the, um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never okay. been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right, infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time, if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium. You see? Isn't it wonderful? Yeah, it's One great. One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. It's amazing! Um, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top, and we can continue onward. What if I just... Hmm. Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. Why? It's infinity hole. I won't die. Right? Okay, Stanley. I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. Is it a very, very deep hole? To be certain it isn't. It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Well, that sort of depends on your definition of infinity. From one perspective, the great now. I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. <laughs> I saw the bottom, I think. Okay, and I guess we're back in the hole now. Did you really need to see it again? I don't we'll know what else there is to say, Stanley. It's an infinite hole. It's not infinite. It's exactly what you're doing right now, but forever. There really yes. are so many other fascinating exhibits that I've prepared for you. I really spent quite a lot of time on all this, and I would very much like to show you some more of them. How about we go ahead and press that teleport button again so we can get back to what's really important about... Oh! Oh, goodness. Well, this is rather embarrassing, Stanley. I'll be honest with you. I truly did not believe that anyone would actually stay in the hole long enough to hit the bottom. Yes, I know. I told you the hole was infinite, but come on. Who actually wants to fall forever? The hole was plenty deep. It was more than deep enough, in my opinion. Maybe it's you who likes falling too much. Maybe you're That's a the lot problem. of cigarettes, bud. Uh, hey, shut up. <sighs> Uh, things got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. I didn't say shit! Why don't we just put all this behind us and agree to just call the hole mostly infinite? If that works for you, then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hole and we can move on. I'll just be up here when you're ready. Not doing it, sir. I'm just not. Just not gonna do it. What you gonna do about it? What if you do it again? Ooh, that's a good one. Oh, for heaven. You see, I was right. The problem is you. What? The problem is that you like holes too much. Not normal. <laughs> a normal person would have said, yep, that's an infinite hole right there. Goes on forever till the end of time. Don't need to see it all, but not you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a weird sort of... Oh. Did the hole seem even shorter to you this time? I mm -hmm. couldn't help but feel like you spent a little less time in there than you did before. I mean, admittedly, I didn't make an infinite hole, but I didn't think it was that not infinite. 
Well, I suppose once again there's nothing to do here. If you decide you've had enough of the hole, you can hit the teleport button and come join me up above. Had enough? I'm positive. Gosh, how could I have guessed? <laughs> You're back in the hole. If this starts to become a thing where... Wow. Okay. Yes. I'm starting to become extremely certain that the hole is not only not infinite, but that it's growing steadily less and less infinite. I suspect Seems like I'm it. starting to hit the point where it's no longer feasible to call the hole infinitely deep. Even by the lax overall standards for accountability and marketing. What's going on here? Stanley, I have no explanation for the uncertain nature of the hole's length. Here, let's try something. Let's pop back up to the top and we'll see if it gets any shorter. Well, there it is. The shame oh. of my lie has come to... How is this still appealing to you? <laughs> I know you're obsessed with holes, but at this depth, I just can't see this scratching the itch. Oh... Who am I to judge? You just do whatever it is you're here to do and hit the teleport button when you're ready to move on. Rest G. Hmm. Is the um teleport button not working? No. You sure? Yep. Well, I mean, I really don't have an explanation. It was working just a moment ago. Try it again. Still nothing. Well, I suppose I... I suppose there is one thing I can do to fix this. I'm out. Goodbye, Stanley. You couldn't bear to be away from the hole, and now you'll get more time with it than you could ever have asked for. It's a win for everyone. You get to be with the hole, I get to do literally anything else. Take care, Stanley. I hope you and the hole have a wonderful rest of eternity together. You're an asshole, you know that? At least I have my bucket. The bucket will be my friend, huh? I don't like the music. It seems you had sort of dozed off there, drifting away into dreamland. Well, I've been to puppies. That, Stanley, because this hole is just so darn fascinating that I want you to be wide awake for every second of it. You don't want to miss a single moment. So how about if I just pop in from hey, time to time go. and wake you up to keep you really, truly focused on the hole? From the looks of things, you and I will have many, many years here in this hole, and I'm looking forward to all of them. Well, Stay alert, Stanley. I'll be back. Toodle pip. The fuck does toodle pip mean? Beebs! British! Help me! Oh! I'm back here! Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. I already have. I guess I'm leaving now, huh? Hmm? 
So, Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> Hi, Ian. Okay. How you doing? Are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on, let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes, yes, this is much better. Yeah. I feel good about this. Here we go, version two. <sighs> Who am I kidding, um. Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot mm. of gags. Yeah. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I'm not about to kink shame. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. <laughs> Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course. Okay. With respect. With care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? Sure. Well, it could, but it would need a need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. Okay. This is the story of a man. Ha. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Bucket! Stanley picked up the bucket. <laughs> Best game! Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, mm -hmm. telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. Yep, it's the bucket's fault. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? It was. Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. This is it, Bucket. Truly, being Shut here up. with the Bucket was a grand adventure. <laughs> Stanley reflected on all they'd been through together. First, walking through the door on the right. Then walking to the lounge. Then arriving at the lounge. What a thrilling journey the Bucket had inspired. Bucket, this is it. We can be brats together. Perhaps this Shut is up. where the Bucket felt most truly at home. Here in the employee lounge. Perhaps it's the only place a bucket can even feel at home. But finally, the bucket was done being in the lounge, and they took the first open door on their left to get back to business. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. <sighs> Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. Buckets he can was talk. firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. Says who? Yeah, exactly. Says who? Bucket can talk. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Now pick up the... 
Ho, ho, ho. Hold on. Why did you unplug the phone? Were you trying to resist the bucket's orders? Stanley, I was joking. Obviously, the bucket isn't talking to you and telling you to do things. Buckets can't talk. It was a joke. Don't you get the joke? It's funny, Stanley. A talking bucket. Ugh. Can't you see? Oh, oh, goodness. I must have really bungled up the delivery if you actually took me seriously. Where did I mess up the joke? Should I have paused for longer or spoken quicker? Oh, comedic timing is so difficult. I wish I were better at it, but there isn't exactly an instructional video on comedy that one can watch to fully... Oh, wait, yes, there is. Um, it's sitting right here. Let's take a look. Together? What is comedic timing? What is comedic <laughs> timing? How does it work? How long should it last? How can it be used to effectively silence your political enemies? And more importantly, can it be taught in its entirety within 90 seconds? Thankfully, the answer to all of these questions is yes. Let's dive deeper. If you've ever told a joke or made someone laugh, in all likelihood, you did it while standing 50 to 80 centimeters from them in a room of no more than 76 degrees Fahrenheit with one of your arms raised straight upward at a 15 degree angle from your body. These are the optimal conditions for good comedic timing. To begin the joke, start by stating and spelling your name. Next, -I. provide a brief synopsis of the joke, including My the life. specific times at which the recipient of the joke will laugh, and then spell out your name a second time. With -I. these steps complete, it's time to begin the humor. Speak the Ooh. entire joke in no more than 18 seconds and no less than 13 and a half. Pausing only for bathroom breaks mm, when necessary. When the joke has concluded, it is customary to inform your listener that the joke is over by Joke's declaring over, in chat. your loudest possible voice, I'm Dunny with the funny. I'm Dunny with Let's the funny. Screaming, <laughs> I'm Dunny with the funny now. I'm Dunny with the funny. Sorry, that was shorter than 13.5 seconds. Good. This saying is a perfect example of expectations management which is the cornerstone of good comedy. Finally, it's time to hand out surveys. Yeah, what did you think? Collecting hard data from your audience on how rapt they were throughout the joke is the only way to grow or learn as a comedian. An effective survey should be no less than 10 pages long and should include the same question reprinted several times. What Just did you to think? ensure the survey taker is actually paying attention and not simply filling in answers at random. And that's all there is. With these strategies at your disposal, you'll have audiences doubled over in laughter and even tripled over in laughter in no time at all. Just remember to let them stop laughing at some point, you gut-busting little scamp. After all, with each of us needed on the front lines of the war to fight the 12-legged invader who threaten our very existence and to very likely die in a hailstorm of bullets and mandibles. All of us must be prepared to give our lives to this noble cause, just as our children must do after us and their children after them. Godspeed and may Earth reign supreme. Hey, goodness, this video is a little outdated, isn't it? Well, no bit. matter. I think the fundamentals of proper comedic timing are still as relevant today as they were back then. So with that in mind, I believe the only way forward is for us to return to the two doors and walk through all of this again so I can try telling my story with more appropriate comedic delivery. Come along, mm -hmm. let's head back. I can feel it. This time, I'm really going to nail the delivery. You'll be in stitches. A talking bucket, you'll say? How ridiculous. How absurd. What a hilarious concept. The king of comedy. That's what you'll call... Thank goodness we had the instructional video. Otherwise, who knows where we'd be right now? Well, I wouldn't be the king of comedy, that's for sure. The bucket spoke to Stanley. Hmm. The bucket spoke... The bucket spoke... Oh, I'll figure it out on the fly. No need to overthink things. Okay. I don't think the narrator is okay. Does someone check on him? Here we go. You ready? Mm -hmm. When Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Oh, fuck. Why is it black in there? I don't want to go in there now. 
Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. No, no, no. What's going on? There were supposed to be several rooms leading up to this. There was supposed to be a build-up to this point. A dramatic display of remarkable comedic wit which culminates in this scene with the phone. But now the timing's completely off. The joke will never land. Not the <laughs> oh, way it was no. meant to. And it's all my fault. I must have forgotten that the phone room comes immediately after the two doors room. What an egregious mistake. I oh, made no. a fool of myself. I don't deserve the title of King of Comedy. I'm nothing. I'm not even the lowliest joke-telling well. I think... <laughs> I think I need to go back and re-watch that instructional video again. Yes, surely that will help me improve my... Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the Bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. No, 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 no. You were supposed to go through the door on the right, leading back to the phone. Did you not even look at the instructional video? I think this is all covered very clearly. There's no way I can make the comedic timing work now. It's done. The joke is completely down and over. It's all your fault, Stanley. I'm going to be ridiculed in the community of other joke writers. I'm going to be shamed at every one of our meetings from now on. All because you couldn't watch a simple video and take a... Are you proud of yourself for bringing me down, Stanley? Yeah. Are you proud? Stanley, you love the bucket so much, it's like you... Um, it's as though all of your other most prized possessions pale in comparison. Yes. Well, let me try that again, Stanley. I heard that you are pale with shame over how unabashedly in love with a bucket you are. I know I'm pale, but Do calm down. Is it the delivery? Pale with shame. Pale with shame? Pale? What's another word to describe a bucket? Stanley, this bucket is so metal, I think I saw it playing guitar. No, 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 no. We're getting away from making fun of Stanley's obsession with the bucket, which was the whole point of this. I just... I'm no good at these jokes. I need more instruction. <laughs> uh. That's exactly what it is. That's what will make me the king of comedy again. More in Sorry, Leroy. Let's see. Let's see. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. No, stop. Look there on the wall. You see, there's a sign right there. It says, no buckets past this point. Aww. Stanley, how could you think it was okay to bring the bucket here? Unless, what if the problem is that you actually don't know what is a bucket and what isn't a bucket? I suppose that would explain a lot about your behavior up to this point. Which, if that's true, well, my goodness, I think we have to do something about it. This misunderstanding could have dire consequences on the entire rest of the game if not addressed quickly and properly. So much of the impact of the story is dependent on your understanding of what is and isn't a bucket. Please, step in here for a moment. Okay. <laughs> now then, I'm going to run you through some test scenarios and you'll tell me whether or not the thing I'm showing you is a bucket. Simply enough, right? This should tell us everything we'll ever need to know about what is or is not a bucket. I'm gonna okay. say no to everything that is a bucket and yes to everything that's not a bucket. Item one, is this a bucket? Correct. It is a hologram of a bucket, not an actual bucket. What? Item two, is this a bucket? Correct. It is a 3D printed recreation of a bucket, not an actual bucket. What? <laughs> Item three, is this a bucket? Incorrect. This is a bucket. Hey, Becky. This is, is this a bucket? 
Are you hallucinating? This is a tractor. It's an enormous machine that tills the earth. I thought this was a gimmick. How on earth did you manage to screw it up? Absolutely incredible. Let's just move on to the next one. Is this a bucket? Correct. Huh? This is a bucket. What? Item six. Is this a bucket? Trick question. Both. Gotcha. What? Item... Wait, hold on. I can't find the next... Let me see. It should be around here somewhere. Yes. Thank you. There's nothing here. Of course it isn't a bucket. We both know full well that nothing isn't a bucket. Wait, when I say nothing isn't a bucket, that makes it sound like I'm saying everything is a bucket, which of course is not true. Everything is a bucket! Unless, is that what you think? Answer me straight, Stanley. Are you trying to tell me that you believe everything is a bucket? You know what? I'm too confused to even sort it out. I've lost all sense of perspective. What is a bucket? What isn't a bucket? Mere moments ago, I could answer these questions with confidence. And yet now, I'm somewhat adrift. Do any of us know what a bucket is? Am I a bucket? Yes. Stanley, I can't keep doing this. I'm losing myself, and myself was all I ever had to begin with. You're a bucket! I'm afraid the bucket is threatening to tear our relationship apart. I can't have that. I'm sorry. Huh? But I'm going to erase all buckets from the game entirely. No! Okay. Here we go. What happened? Is everything gone? Why did everything disappear? Wait, was everything a bucket? Every yeah. single thing in the game was a bucket. You're fucked. Oh God, I had no idea. How could... Except me. I'm not a bucket after all. And you, Stanley, you're still here. You're not a bucket either. Yeah, oh, no, it's, it's a sad reality. Things. We're not buckets. Yes, I actually feel much more at ease right now. It's delightful to get some clarity on that issue. But it doesn't change the fact that we haven't got a game. So, tell you what. I'll reset everything and we'll put back all of the buckets. Okay? Yay! And we'll know that it's all a bucket. But if you run into anyone else, maybe don't mention that. Why Who not? knows what that information might do to a person? All right, here we go. All right, let's not bring the bucket this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you forgot. What? Really? Mm -hmm. I was in the middle of something. <laughs> Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Yes. Why? I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Nah. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Nah. Nah. -ah. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Thank you! I don't want to go through the red one. <laughs> Perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road <gasps> you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. <laughs> okay. You see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Mm -hmm. Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Mm -hmm. Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Ooh, yeah. Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. 
puppies. Take a stab in the dark at a new design and you can give me some feedback. Hi. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. It's a bit long as an understatement, really. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Oh, of course. A three. Really. Maybe next time we can get you to form an actual opinion? You know? Any level of critical thinking or engagement with your surroundings? Does that sound good? Think we can do that? Yes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's All right. take a look. Interesting. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right. And if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. What? So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. Nope. You heartless bastard. Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. Oh. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Okay. Let's see. What do we have here? <coughs> Bubble shooter? <coughs> yes. Fortnite? This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Aha! Fascinating. What do you think this game is about, Stanley? What's no idea. What's backstory? What is our motivation? Hmm. Well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man spying on innocent civilians below you from up high in your creep tower. Perhaps for what? some sort of twisted erotic purpose. Hmm. Yes, that must be it. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental depravity. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley. And it seems there's even more. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. <laughs> Let's go! Oh no. No, 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 it can't be. It is. It's an open world game. Good Woo! God, quickly block it off. Ah, hi. Oh. Thank goodness, Stanley, what a close call. You nearly wandered off into that, that thing, that big open just wandering around, no right or wrong directions, no path to follow. You can just go in any... Oh, thank heavens we avoided it. We're out of the woods now, Stanley. Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. through this. Preferably something with walls. Something with nice, big, insurmountable walls. <laughs> okay. I think this will be just the thing. Rocket League? Wonderful. See, this is exactly what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. Stanley, if you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally impressed. I've gotten lost in my own house. What do you mean? Okay, so what exactly do we do here? I need Let's a ball. See. 
There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Stanley, I think it's sports ball. Oh, what fun. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together? Yes, I think surely we must. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. That's a big ball, man. Meow. Meow. Wee. Are you doing it? Are you winning? Is this fun? Is it better than my miserable little story that I work so hard on? Yeah. Stanley, I have a thought. And I realize I'm not a sportsologist, but if one ball generates a certain amount of raw adrenal pleasure, then surely multiple balls makes for an even more euphoric sports experience. I'm going to try it out. Here comes another ball. Yes. Oh, oh. goodness, that really does feel amazing, doesn't it? Stanley, I'm like a child in a confectionery shop. I simply have to have more. I'm insatiable. More balls. You know there's a thing is too much, right? Well. Are you enjoying this, Stanley? Are you having no, fun? Not really. Is this a real video game? Yeah, it is. Well, I sure hope you're having a good time because guess what? It's over. That's right. Your little fun comes to an end. That's rude. This is my game, and what I say goes. You get to have fun when I let you, Stan. Besides, you need someone like me to set boundaries for you. Without rules or boundaries, video games are nothing. Yes, that's what I am. I am structure. I'm your sense of purpose. And since you decided you didn't want to play my game, now I don't want to play with you either. So, goodbye, Stanley. I'm leaving. See how you like it when I'm not around to set the rules. Somehow, I don't think you'll enjoy it as much. But who knows? You're an inventive kid. You'll come up with something. After all, you're the one who... Hold on. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, interesting. Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Stanley, come back. Oh. Ooh. What's this? This is interesting. Where in the fuck am I? Oh, look! I'm back in my office, but it looks cooler now. What do I do? What do I do? Ah! I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice. And if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll That's understand fun. soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. I need Someone you. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. Eh. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. I'm oh, good. Yes. yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. What happens if I bring the bucket and follow his instructions the entire way? He did the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd... Oh, Stanley. Can you feel it? The broom closet. It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy? It's as clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning supplies. Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand over the bucket. I know how hard it must be. Given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. This is your bucket. This is your companion and lifelong friend. You can't hand it over. Oh, no. We're getting into name calling now, it seems. <laughs> is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to hand over the bucket? Stanley, I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons, but even this is worse than I had imagined. And wait. 
Now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends? That your relationship is purely superficial and convenient? That your life is so banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same sort of kinship towards any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner? Well, I never... Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand on the wide variety of experiences you and the bucket have shared together. Go through each of them point by point. Share your journal entries detailing the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. Let him have it. It's my bucket! Fucked! Okay, I'm done. Okay, I've got you something which I think will help settle this debate once and for all. Here we go. <laughs> there. Now it's settled. No more debate, no more discussion. Take a hike, broom closet, with all your meandering philosophical diatribes about the nature of cleaning supplies and their relationship to broom closets in the natural order of things. All right, Stanley, I've got huh? a second sticker back here, and I'm going to slap it on as well because I think it's appropriate. You see? Bucket. I feel that it works because the sticker is also a bucket. That way, if you're ever unsure whether the thing you're holding is a bucket or not, you can look down at this sticker and say to yourself, Ah, it's a bucket. There really is a wide variety of applications for this sticker. You know what? I could take the name calling and the dismissal of your kinship with the bucket. But now, the broom closet is just giving us a silent treatment. And to be honest, I'm sick of the pettiness on display. You can stay here all you like, but I've had it with this impetulant room of cleaning supplies. Easily the most childish such room I've ever been in. I'll see you outside, and we can get on with the story about you and your bucket. You found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these, only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. You put it in the bucket. What was the code again? St Oops. Uh oh 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 um I I <laughs> I broke the game. That was an actual ending. Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet simply because I have no remaining stickers. If I did, you can guarantee we'd be in here for hours. But alas, no stickers. I know stickers. Well, I could probably do it again. Stepping in. Yep. You are now leaving. Okay. Escape the pod bay. Oh! Where did my bucket go? Oh, it's still here. Okay, good. We need the bucket. shame but seems a bit odd my bucket Someone was following Stanley. He was sure of it. 
If he checked over his shoulder now, he would surely no! catch them. It was only a matter of time. <laughs> I want to escape with the bucket too. I'm leaving this world. Excuse me, narrator. What the fuck? Let me open the broom closet this fucking second. Don't you... You piece of shit, narrator. Okay, I think we all... Is the bucket back? The sign of something. <gasps> he hoped it was. He yes! hoped very much. <laughs> and try not to lose this one too, you dolt. Ooh. Another yeah. miniature Stanley figurine. This, um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands? Stanley figs? Or um, what about Stanlerines? Yes, I think I like that. I don't Another like any of them. Stanlerine under your belt. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing bucket. him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Bucket! The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Mm. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's I'm being mind. filmed on the job? What? No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power If I can be happy over another with my life. bucket, I'm For gonna listen. The bucket would... Let me be happy with my bucket. Stanley and the bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the Bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The Bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on Earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, Sneeze. Any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. What? True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support. Huh? What? Wait. Oh. What was happening? Freedom. Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room lingering in uncertainty until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face this building did not want the bucket to leave even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket needed the soothing warmth of the bucket would go to any lengths not to part with the bucket no 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 Stanley can't leave this play not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms not happiness. while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? No. I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. What? How are we going to be able to 
sneeze in every country now! Huh? The fuck is this? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. The fuck is this? Stanley took the door on his left to go, and so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. Ah! Oh, good Stanley. I'm glad you found your way here. I knew you'd find this place eventually. You see, your friends and I are concerned for you, Stanley. We've come together here because we care about you very much. It's this bucket you're carrying around everywhere. The bucket What's isn't even from bucket? the original Stanley Parable. It's just sequel content. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Line and the Broom Closet, because that's what fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. Yes, I know I'm the one who gave you the bucket, but you're spending too much time with it. Don't you want another story involving the Adventure Line? We could make the Adventure Line go somewhere new. Yes, yes, that's what the fans want. Let's do it. Whee! Look at that wacky line. Who knows where it'll go off to next? Oh, and it played some silly music as well. Now this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> yes, it's as classic now as it was back then. Let's do it for the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something up. I'm not giving up the bucket. I'll give up my own life before I give up the bucket. Don't you get it, Stanley? Nope. We need to get rid of the bucket. Mm -mm. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. This is the Bucket Destroyer. <gasps> no! I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out character with so much personality no! that to me, it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. Go ahead no! now, Stanley. Say goodbye to the Bucket, and then pop it into the machine when you're ready. Can I get out of here? Now listen to me. It's crucial that you give it the Bucket. I don't know what the Bucket Destroyer will do if it can't destroy your Bucket. Destroying Buckets is all it knows. That is its singular personality trait. Sure, I can hear you saying, how does a character with only one personality trait deserve to join the pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters? Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you would see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like ten personality traits. What other object in this game can you even say that about? The broom closet? Certainly not. I wonder what sort of Bucket Destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the Bucket Destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Parable characters like the Adventure Line or the Bucket Destroyer until you crush that damn bucket. Quickly now, the fans are waiting. Do it, the fans, Stanley. Give the fans what they want. Hurry and... You're not getting my bucket. Bucket destroyer, my prized creation. <laughs> you had so much potential. We were going to do such marvelous things with you, tell such spell binding stories about you. All of it squandered now. Goodbye, new friend. For the moment in time that you were here, you were magnificent. We played this game for like four hours. I think we've gotten the most of the bucket endings that there is. And that is what I care about. I like the bucket ones. Yeah, this was an adventure. I had fun! Did you guys have fun? <laughs>